We have a goal to continue to improve response times, no matter who is responding. More than a year of Denver 7 investigations leads to major changes. We've always got to look at how we improve ourselves. A monumental agreement has been reached that will improve emergency care for everyone living in Denver. I'm excited. I'm excited for what we're going to be doing for our city going forward. Aurora has officially named a new interim police chief. It's uh, exciting to be here in Aurora. Who won't say if he'll take the job permanently. For the next uh, few months, maybe longer. And a trashy record for Colorado. All this stuff is valuable and they could reuse it. Our state's recycling rate hasn't improved in years, but there's some hope that improvements are on the way. Colorado has taken some major actions in 2022 that should help transform our recycling system. Good evening and thank you for joining us at 6. I'm Ann Trujillo. And I'm Shannon Ogden. For more than a year now, Denver 7 Investigates has been digging into problems at Denver Health. From dangerous delays in response times to paramedics feeling pressure to bypass qualified hospitals while they have critically injured patients. Well, tonight, Denver Health announces a major development that looks to improve safety. And here to break everything down is Chief Investigative Reporter Tony Kowaleski. Yeah, good evening, Ann and Shannon. The question everybody's asking is who wins here? And the clear answer is the people of Denver. Before our reporting, most had no idea about the delayed response times, times when the city had no ambulances available, and the unknown internal pressures on paramedics. Last month, Denver's mayor said it was no longer acceptable. And now the city announced this major change. This is a big deal. It's a big change. In Denver's mayor and the new CEO of Denver Health. We have a goal to continue to improve response times, no matter who is responding. Both concisely framed the issues and the new future for Denver residents needing emergency care. We all recognize we had to get better. I mean, one of the areas that we focused on is how we empower our fire department and the men and women who respond typically first. During the past year, Denver 7 Investigates placed a bright spotlight on the culture inside Denver Health's paramedic division. Emails, testimonials, and data uncovered concerns over response times and policies that prevented firefighters from providing advanced life support while waiting for ambulances. Engine 18 traffic. Uh, they have no buses available at this time. Stand by. Engine 1, engine 26, and engine 8. We'll let you know. How many times... Do you think firefighters could make a difference by issuing an IV? Every shift, every day. She didn't deserve to die. We also heard from a mother who questioned a life and death decision with her 11 year old daughter. She deserved better. In that case, records showed paramedics elected to bypass a hospital just two miles away and instead drive three times the distance back to Denver Health. Two humans made bad decisions that day and took a child from this world. We also heard from courageous paramedics risking their careers to question the culture and motivation of leadership, pressuring paramedics to bypass qualified hospitals. Were you ever questioned about a decision to bring a level one trauma patient to the closest hospital instead of Denver Health? Yes, by my superiors and the medical direction team. Do you think Denver Health believes that they can't be stopped? Yes, they do. They, they play by their own rules. Denver's mayor and city leaders acknowledge the critical role played by the paramedics and the firefighters who sent strong messages during the past year. Now, a new agreement includes 35 changes, moves designed to increase accountability, transparency, and the safety of Denver residents. I do think it it takes some of the noise that, quite frankly, I've observed in the system. These are designed to create a unified system. I hope and pray it's successful because ultimately it means we save lives, right? And we help cut short the crises because I think it's a partnership that ultimately will benefit the people of Denver. Now, the new agreement means there are now two medical directors, one for Denver Fire directing firefighters until the paramedics arrive, and one for Denver Health directing paramedics after they arrive. It also calls for new paramedic training for firefighters. That means they can provide advanced life support skills while they wait for paramedics from Denver Health to arrive. And All right, Tony, so what's the timeline here for change and when can residents expect to see a difference? A lot of people saying it can't happen quick enough, but it will be a multi-phase transition that will be rolled out during the next 
six to 12 months. Ann? All right, Tony, thank, thank you, Tony. you for that. And you can see all of Tony's in-depth investigations into Denver Health right now on Denver7.com and Denver7 Plus. All you have to do is search Denver Health. The city of Aurora has chosen its next interim police chief. Denver 7 was first to learn that Art Acevedo was being considered for the job, and today that has become official. Acevedo just spoke about his new role in Aurora, which is where we find Denver 7's Rob Harris. Rob? Yeah, as you mentioned, guys, literally just ended with this press conference, basically introducing himself to the community of Aurora. We asked him how long he's going to be here, and he didn't quite say. We do know that the contract allows him to be here between six months and a year on that interim basis. When we asked him if he's interested in the job long term, he didn't quite answer that, but said he's excited going forward. One thing he did say towards the beginning of his remarks is that the community of Aurora has been in his sights for a long time. Take a listen. I've got a great deal of respect for the Aurora Police Department. I'll never forget the heroism. And I'll never forget the presentation that the chief made to us. It spoke as to the heart of a police department, the courage of a police department. And I think it's going to be a privilege for me for the next uh, few months, maybe longer, maybe up to a year, to keep the ball moving. Now, earlier today, I talked to two people who've worked with the Community Police Task Force in Aurora, which has since been disbanded. They both said that they want the community members to be connected to this new police chief, and they want the chance to speak with him face to face to ask about reforms that may be coming. I did ask Acevedo that during this press conference. He said he's been reviewing the, um, the contract with the city on and the consent decree with those reforms in place, pressed for other reforms coming. He said that's gonna take some time, but that is something that he is considering. He is set to officially begin as chief in early December. Guys. All right, Rob Harris in Aurora tonight. Thank you, Rob. At midnight tonight, Colorado's emergency rental assistance application portal will close. You can find the application by visiting colorado.gov and search emergency rental program. The state tells Denver 7 they have distributed $300 million in emergency rental funds so far and still have about $100 million left for those who need them. So the state will review all applications sent in before midnight tonight again and will then determine how to allocate those remaining funds. Well, it seems Colorado's recycling rate is not great. Turns out only about 16% of our state's waste escapes the landfill, and we are far behind the rest of the country. Denver 7's Megan Lopez digging deeper into a new report released today and explaining why advocates say this was actually a good recycling year for Colorado. Year after year, we are here today to release our sixth annual State of Recycling and Composting in Colorado report. The same group of people come together to talk about Colorado's waste diversion rates and year after year. And this is um, some of the sobering news. The results are the same. Despite our green reputation, Colorado has never really been good at recycling. The statewide rate has been pretty stagnant over the last six years. That rate less than half the national average, meaning 84% of Colorado's waste ends up wasting away in a landfill because of those stubborn numbers. So this is a good example of, you know, all these different things. You'd think recycling advocates like Danny Katz are frustrated. All this stuff is valuable and they could reuse it if they only could get it back. But this year he says things are different. This year he's hopeful. Colorado has taken some major actions in 2022 that should help transform our recycling system. State legislators passed a producer responsibility law requiring companies that produce the waste to pay for it. The money will then stand up a statewide recycling program. So give everybody a recycling bin and then make it easy to know what goes in there with a simple list that every single person has in the state. Cities also took big steps this year to improve those rates. Like Denver City Council passing a pay as you throw program starting in 2023 to charge residents a fee based on their waste. Then last week, what we're hoping is that there's a shift in our overall culture here. Denver voters overwhelmingly passed a measure to bring even more recycling to the city with Initiative 306. It will now have recycling and composting phased in to all businesses, including apartments, condos, restaurants, 
hotels, sporting events. Vail has expanded its composting over the past year. Avon and others passed ordinances requiring recycling. Glenwood Springs and Breckenridge passed their own pay-as-you-throw programs and more. Advocates say all this is a sign. It's about protecting our environment and reducing our pollution. That finally Colorado is ready to turn the page on its dismal recycling rates. Megan Lopez, Denver 7. And let's give you a different perspective here. Environmental nonprofit organization Greenpeace USA released a report in October looking at the usage of single use plastics here in the US. And the report finds that most of the plastic produced by big companies simply cannot be recycled. And the report finds that in 2021, U.S. households generated an estimated 51 million tons of plastic waste. Only 2.4 million tons of that recycled. Now, the issue lies in the chemical additives and colorants used in single use plastics. In fact, the report finds there are only two kinds of plastics that meet acceptable recyclable standards. It makes me feel sick. I hadn't really let it set in that we wouldn't get it back. An Aurora couple thought they were correcting a mistake through their bank. He seemed to have all of our information. Instead, all of their life savings gone in an instant. Now they're getting help through Contact Denver 7 and warning others. Maybe if they've heard our story, they'll it'll yeah. prevent it from happening again. Clear skies and cold tonight, but there's snow and even colder weather coming up later this week.